This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast. Once again on this epic disaster. Thank you for joining us, folks. We're here sitting in our incense uh, full room, full incense room, incense loaded room, whatever you want to call it. And today it's going at my face instead of yours. What? The Thank fuck? goodness. Uh, I I don't know. I just I don't I, like it. Well, I don't like now it. Now you know how I feel. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, how are you doing? How was your week? It's been a week. It's been a week. It's been quite a while. A while. Yeah. Uh, this has been hectic. Uh, today was a very stressful day. And now I'm kind of taking it easy. I apologize that you had a stressful day. I'm very sorry for you. I feel for you. Well, it wasn't. You didn't cause way. the stress. So you don't have to apologize for the stress. I'm I'm sorry that you're dealing with stress. Thank you, uh, but you know I'll get over it. I know I'm you. I'm sure I will. I mean I have no worries. I feel confident that I will. Ultimately, I'm just saying that to be polite. You know what I need right now? What? Martin? Some beer. Well, we could, we should do a live beer review. Okay, but I'm not drinking beer. Uh, last week I didn't drink. Any beer? Because I was on a hell diet. What are we gonna do? Do we have this to start week, doing like scotch tastings? No, we can't. It's well, expensive. I mean, I'm okay with doing some occasionally doing some scotch tasting. We talked about cocktails, but the reason I don't want to do cocktails is because every mixture is different. Right. So if you say, "Oh, this uh, martini is really awesome," no one's gonna be able to get that martini. And but, I don't always make awesome martinis. I mean, unless they go to the same bar. Right. And even then, they may not get the same. The martini. sherry bar. Right. Right. That yeah. doesn't happen. No. So, okay. So today we're going to drink a beer. That's right. I'm going to have a few drinks, like like a few a swallows. Few sips. Yes. Of this beer. And let me go ahead and pour me some first, and then you can have the rest. Well, I should explain the live beer review, because we do a live beer review every show. Okay. And for those who might just started listening to podcasts, and they're, those are, they're out there. New they people, are. A couple just, people. And welcome. Sure. We do a live beer review. So we, we drink a beer at the beginning of the show. Usually it's a beer. It, it is a beer we've never had on the show before. And then at the end of the podcast, we'll tell you what we think about it. And we give it a rating. We do. We rate it between one and five. Mm -hmm. And I tend to rate lower than you on a regular basis. I don't know that's I'm true. Not, I'm, I'm big on giving people praise. Mm -hmm. I'm not big on giving beer praise. I feel like you apparently. like more beer than I do. So I feel like you, you do, well... It doesn't matter. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> today what we're drinking is from Abita Brewing, and Abita, Abita. is Abita. Abita. Abita is actually Abita. quite good. I beat the shit out um, of you if you drink that. No. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't beat the shit out of me. Okay. So this is uh, called Thirty Ninety. Uh -huh. uh, it coordinates to a good time. Oh. So it's like thirty latitude, ninety. Wait, thirty longitude. 90 uh, anyway so i'm guessing that's probably their location that's where they are uh, -huh. uh mississippi river gold oh. lager wow so this is it says a crisp gold lager with a light color and body brewed with pilsner malt hopped and dry hopped for citrus aroma and flavor so this i'm going to like this you did, you said you didn't like hops no, I mean it's got it's got some hops, yeah, but it's not hoppy like an okay. IPA. It's a lager. It's different. Okay. It's different. I like the lagers. I do too. Now this is made in uh, Abita Springs, Louisiana. Louisiana. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will let you know here in a little bit what we think of it. I'm going to go ahead and have a sip now. Color wise, it's one of those really kind of. It is gold. It's very goldy. Oh wow! It smells super hoppy, but it doesn't taste yeah, it does. super hoppy. Okay, I'm gonna have That's some. That's interesting. It, it definitely is gold. Kind of, uh, I, I'm not gonna say watery, but I mean, it's it's yeah, not. It looks like beer. Crystal, it's crystal clear. It looks like beer. It's like potty. It doesn't look like potty. It looks like beer. You are twelve. No, you're nine. I'm twelve. Okay. Okay. Uh, kind of piney, little piney. Piney. Uh, I taste um, some floral, not like. Flower, I shouldn't say floral. Uh, foliage, 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 foliage. There's a word there. It's not foliage. I got my uh, ad, ad, my um, verbs, not verbs. What are those words? <laughs> I can't think nouns. of anything. Nouns, not nouns. The um, um, 
What? <laughs> Are you even with us? Vowels. Today? That's what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh, I see. Okay. I haven't That's had not used a word. That. I haven't had an English class in a long time. I haven't had used the word vowels in a long time. I got them screwed up. All I right? use the word Sometimes vowels. Sometimes I do that. I use the I word get vowels. Lips. I can't help it. Every time somebody texts me without using them, mm -hmm. I say, I will text you back as soon as you include vowels. Yeah. Because people text with like WNT for want. Yes. And, and it's just stupid. I'm sorry. You have. Um, autocorrect or whatever on there so you type like the first two letters and it knows what you want to type just hit the button just hit it just hit the button it's one button as opposed to all those other buttons that you apparently cannot hit because there are so many fucking vowels Not you've cool. been hanging out with me way too long <laughs> what do you mean you're starting to sound like me you're getting cranky like me like old crankiness i'm just getting older now you're like going off on people who don't use vowels that's the sign of old age right there. Well, it's just rude to vowels. I mean, I know your birthday was recently, but I mean, you, you just like went right over the hill <laughs> to cranky about vowels. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. And while you're at it, use vowels. Until you learn how to use vowels, do not get on my lawn. Uh, let's play some... Z oh, I forgot to use my vowels. Let's play Zabmondo. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Zabmondo without vowels is a frightening sound. Zabmondo, uh, one of our favorite games here, which is a game of Would You Rather. I'm going first. Oh, look, we didn't put the card back to correct last week. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm moving. Um, so basically, we get to ask each other Would You Rather questions. You're going first this week? Of course. Okay. A green, green one. I almost called that. I'm, I'm, my calling career is over. I'm not going to do that anymore. You I've decided, say that every I week. know, and then I call them, but I'm not calling them anymore. I swear. I swear to God, I'm not going oh, to Oh, okay. Because <laughs> that matters to you. All right. Green is ethics. Oh, God. I don't have any. Ethics and intellect. This is going to be difficult for you. Yeah. In a, uh, would you rather, in a burning building where you can only save one person, oh, God. take the first person, no matter who it is, or... Skip the first person, seeing that it is someone you hate, and go to the next person and let your enemy die. I would take the first person. Even if it's somebody you hated. If I hated them, well, why do I hate them? Well, it didn't say that. It just said... Do I hate them because they're abusive and murderer? Yes, and that's there on the card there. Rapey you, the and all that. The why you hate it. If that's why I hate them, then I would let them die. So you have... An instant to make a decision, and you walk in, and the person that you hate the most in this world is standing there in front of you. You could take that person, and only that person, or you can let that person die and take someone else, and then your enemy's gone. I can't really answer that question because I don't. I don't, I don't hate anybody. I don't believe that. It's the truth. I have dislike for people, uh -huh. and when I feel myself starting to hate that person, I cut them off completely and just be done. Okay. So if I hated somebody, like if I put that much energy into a negative emotion towards somebody, mm -hmm. then that's on me. That's my fault, and it's not theirs. Yeah, I mean, I can relate to that. I, I don't have any enemies. I mean, I have people... Who that I you care. Call, yeah. I would call them my enemy, but I mean, they're, they're, it's not like I don't have... You know, it's like their enemy because they're against me or something. But, right. And pretty much the whole world is against me. All of them are. But Everybody I don't, hates you. I don't have um, any kind of person that I just see eating and I, I want to kill. No, because I would not put that much energy into that kind of an emotion mm -hmm. towards somebody. Uh, my answer to that would be uh, I would I'll, I would be running far away. I wouldn't save anybody. <laughs> Screw y'all. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of myself. I mean, if I find them on my way out, yeah. I might try and help them up. And that's yeah. that's about as good as it gets. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know what I would do in this. Okay, situation. here's my honest I would, answer. I, I think I would just I would like you. I would just grab the first person. Yeah, but here's here's my honest answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would pick up the cat. Why is there a cat in your office? You never know. It could be the cat. Is it cat day or dog? I would I would take the animal. I'm right. sorry. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop a stone. Here I go. Ew! Do that on your own time. It's gonna be ripped. Oh, it's green. It's green. Oh, you get an ethical question, too. I, have I don't no know ethics. about this. I don't know about this. Oh, <laughs> it's a good one for you. Okay, so it's a would you rather, as a man. Oh, you you're, lost me already. You're a man, right? Okay, so as a man, have your wife artificially inseminated by your best friend 
or your artificially gro- semin- insemin- inseminated. Right. Inseminated. His his seed. Yes. Why? Just for the hell of it? Into your wife. She's not gonna have a, we're not having. This. <laughs> this is like this is something we're doing today. Okay. Let me. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for it. But she's fixed. She can't have kids. <laughs> my best friend. He just kind of wanted to do that. I mean, <laughs> he has nothing else to do today. He wanted to come in a jar and have it squirted inside you. Wait a minute. <laughs> you had to cross the line. <laughs> I like crude. I'm sorry. Okay, so... Uh, uh, or... Or or your brother. Oh. So your okay, best so friend wait, or your brother. Okay, so let's back up here. The reason for doing this is for having a baby, I'm guessing. Well, why else would you artificially inseminate a woman? That's what I'm saying. And okay. most likely it's for that reason. Yes. Okay. Uh, if... If that and and I'm not reproducing, we're not going to do that. Okay, we're not looking me, for a reason. Where, and my wife is sort of at an age where that's that wouldn't be happening. But if we could go back in time, let's say ten years, and uh-huh. we were married, uh-huh. let's maybe fifteen years, and okay. we were married, and we were thinking about having children, and she couldn't, and we were going to get no, you, you know, couldn't. We, we were going to do that, mm-hmm. uh, and I couldn't. Mr. Mm-hmm. Happy was was feeling a little sad. No, he was happy. He was he just w- blank. Was mopey. No, he's not mopey. He didn't want to stand up that day. He's He can stand up. He was taking it easy. He just doesn't have any good energy. He can't get out of his lounge chair. <laughs> I would say I would rather it be my brother. Because if I'm going to have a baby right? I, and I couldn't do it, I would, you know, it would be kind of like still my genetics, right? Yes. Yeah. And you know the medical history, and you have all of the same genes, right. and so you're going to have a lot of similarities as right. far as appearance is and concerned. And my brother is really hung. And look at your best friend. She can't inseminate your wife. Um, well, you you, pro- you could find a way. <laughs> sure. I am incapable of inseminating no, your I wife. Think that I that, that would be the thing is I would do it that way because because of the genetics. I think it would be it'd be closest thing for me having... You know, my own baby, and especially if I was like, what if you were like an ID- identical twin? You would, it would almost be your baby. In fact, you could have by DNA, you, you couldn't tell the difference. No, so you could do it. You can kill your twin, and it's still your baby. Well, you don't have to kill the twin. Yeah, because you don't want him in the picture. Everybody'd be like, which one of you is the daddy? He'll be dead. It's always yours. That's the way you do it. That's how <laughs> so you handle it. So when a daddy it. dies, whoever plays daddy is now the dad. The thing is, in all. Uh, ethical quandaries, murder is almost always the solution. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Good times. Okay. All right. Well, you know where we're... Um, so that's our Zob Mondo. Now, what um, we're about. we do that every <laughs> week. Uh, and sometimes it'll kick off conversations. But in this case, I'm happy it didn't. Because uh, we could have gone some <laughs> oh, dark, we'll, dark places. We'll get into murder, I'm sure. So let's, let's, let's just do a little something here really quick. Because okay. I want to make the people... Ah! I dropped it. Sorry. I want to make the people a little happier. Oh, shit. Never mind. In regard to, um, you know, our darkness that we just went to there for uh-huh. a minute. So I'm going to tell you a quick joke. Oh, wait a minute. A yes. Quick... Actually, I'm going to tell you three jokes. Oh, my gosh. Can I leave? Three jokes in a row. Is there any way that I can maybe leave and while you're doing this and then come back in a few minutes? No. I have... All right, let's get it over with. Okay, oh, joke number on. one. They're all, more beer. they're all pirate jokes, so you pirate. should like that. Okay. Because while I was in Colorado, uh-huh. I went to the Ren Fair, and it was Pirate Weekend. Oh, I see. So I was coming up with jokes and hearing jokes and making jokes. And then somebody said, how how do you spell Ren Fair? And you were like, Arr. Oh, Arr. <laughs> No, that's not a joke. Okay. That's not even funny. You don't even, you, you're not allowed to try. I, I mean, if it's not funny... I'm there with you. Okay. Along that line, uh, the first joke is, what is a pirate's favorite letter? We already did that. But it's not. Everyone thinks it's R, but they really love the C. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So the next joke is... Because they're seamen. They're not seamen. Seamen. They're seamen. They're men of the sea. And women. Sea women, sea men. Of course I see women and men. I'm not blind. See, I could do these jokes all day. That's not funny, though. It's hysterical. It's It's really not. It's the same level of hilarity as what you're delivering. I'm sorry. This is is why your stand-up career went to shit. No, I got out of stand-up on purpose, and it's because... Oh, it was your choice. No, yeah, it's because of jokes like these. I mean, I I wanted to operate on a much more sophisticated level, and the people just couldn't take it. You know why? Because they like these kind of jokes. (laughs) Thank you. When you put these jokes on the internet... 
I mean, like, how many likes? Tons and tons of likes. Uh-huh. Everybody likes them. Uh huh. And you just no one liked my stand up. It's because just... no one understands good humor. Oh my God! Did you just put down every person who has commented on my good jokes on no. our no. Facebook page? No, I'm not putting them down. All right, let's get this over with. All right. So the next one is do do a number two. <laughs> how much does a pirate pay for corn? Um, how much does a pirate? Oh, shucks. I don't know. A buccaneer. Oh. <laughs> Yay. I like that one. Okay. I got another one for you. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver just as many as you are. They're going to be just as good. A slice of apple pie mm-hmm. in Jamaica uh-huh. is $2. Oh, I saw this one on the internet. So I'm not, I'm, I have but to check out of this one. I can't, I can't judge this one because I already know it. But it's $2.50 in the Bahamas. Yes. These are the pirates of the Caribbean. Uh huh. Yay! Funny, funny. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I'd probably laugh at that one, but I, I've seen it. I already saw it. So. All right. You know, the shovel was a groundbreaking invention. How many more of these do you have? <laughs> How many more left on your list? There? I have a fabulous one, but I already put it on the internet, and people already liked it. Was that one of them? No. Oh. I'm done. I, don't, I can't even tell. I Listen, don't know. Listen, I got more for you, but we're going to wait. We're going to get into some other cop topics here really quick. And then I will come back with some awesome jokes. Tip your waiter. I'm here all night. <clears throat> you know, this is like the fifth, fourth or fifth week in a row that there's been a thunderstorm when mm-hmm. we recorded. I mean, and we don't always record on the same day. So, and like there were a couple times we did too. So it's, it seems like every day we record... There's a thunderstorm outside. Yes. I'm beginning to think it's like a curse. I feel like that somehow we're being punished. I feel like that there's some kind of divine um, decree that, I don't know, the gods or whatever should be screwing up our podcast. They don't want us to do the podcast. Actually, that's not true because all these weeks that we've had a thunderstorm, mm-hmm. we've never lost power. We haven't yet. We've had some thunder on the air. But we haven't yet lost power. See, it just wants to be a guest on the podcast. That's possible. That's all it is. But I started thinking, if this curse is going on, if this is an actual curse, it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better, especially if we keep thinking that whatever's doing this is wanting to be a guest. It's like, oh, they're not taking it serious. We're going to have to raise the stakes. So I decided, and I looked it up online, I decided to see if there were um, spells to get rid of a thunderstorm. and. If you can believe this, there are actual spells to get rid of a thunderstorm. I don't doubt it. I really don't doubt it. I'm going I'm going to read some of these. Okay, please do. And be amazed. I, I will be shocked. These are Odd. actual spells. I'm going to do the spell. I'm going to say the spells here. Now, I can't do all of the stuff. Some of the things require some stuff. I can't do those. But the words, I'll do the words. Okay. And we'll see if it gets rid of thunderstorms. And then... We'll see if maybe they get worse or if they go away altogether. Well, it should work because I've got some sage burning now. That's right. All okay. right. So that should help. These are actual websites with spells. So here's <laughs> here's number one. Okay. I'm going to hold a crystal while Here's you do number this. one spell. Okay. Gods and goddesses of the rain, please hear me. Stop the rain. This rain is not wanted. It never should have started. So end it now. For thee to see how. Gods and goddesses of the rain, please hear me. Please stop the rain. Are you joking? That's a spell. You're kidding. No. So what's required with that spell? All it says at the beginning is say how many times you feel it's necessary. So, so you every, can just walk around with your with your with your uh, shopping cart full of your belongings, saying that apparently over and over and over again. I I'm guessing it works. Uh, they say it do it does. I um, <laughs> the rain is not wanted. It should not have started. <laughs> I I like where it says end it now for thee to see how. Isn't it weird how whenever you want to do some kind of religious thing, if you put in like old English and you start doing these and thines and vowels. And rhyming. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it somehow lends credibility to the things that you're saying. All right. Here's another one. Now, this one requires some uh, action. Mm. So I'm All not going right. to do the action. Okay. But I will read these. And by the way, if anybody uh, uh, if is a spell person, and I don't know, is that Wiccan? 
or other satanic people. I don't know. It could be Wiccan, could be pagan, could just be just whatever. people who do spells. Sure. Spell spellite. Is that what they're called? Magic workers. <laughs> the spell spell paterians. Spellian. I um I'm not making fun. I'm just making fun of these particular spells. All these right. ones are kind of silly. This is casting instructions for stopping the storm. All right, take some frankincense and hematite stone. And I love hematite. Place them on a pentacle you've drawn on the ground, <laughs> just anywhere, with your sword or your wand. Because you have to have that. Your wand. The tool. <laughs> Good. Um, does that count? Place the tool <coughs> of your choice in the middle of the pentacle, and while holding the stone in your hand, say, Morrigan goddess of the storm, I ask for your help in every form. Again with the rhymes. Turn it back into the sea, absorb it into the rock, into the tree, send the storm far away from me. And if my goddess does not agree, then manifest, please make it be. So they went over the goddess's head. <laughs> They're like, if the goddess isn't going to do it, hey, manifest, you do it. Just, yeah. And then wow. if manifest won't do it, then fuck thee. <laughs> then fuck thee. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Uh, then take the silver or deep blue glitter. <laughs> you work with glitter. Nice. Because uh, they lay, this religion they has like swords and glitter. Yes. And sprinkle it around the uh, perimeter of the pinnacle and let some fall off your hand into the wind. There's wind now. Well, apparently, because there's a thunderstorm. Leave the stone as an offering to the elements and the goddess, because the goddess is going to be pissed off you went over her head, so you got to bring her something. Please yeah. note, if the storm does not come to your backyard, it will go somewhere else. So try not to deplete your land of anything it needs, just for the sake of seeing if you can do it. So please, kids, don't screw with the spells. <laughs> Basically, the farmers might need the rain for corn. Don't be driving the storms off. If they need the rain. Yeah. Just you, because you don't want to get wet. You you got a picnic and you 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 don't want to drive off the spell. Please, don't mess with the spells, kids. Just because, you know, you think you're too sweet to be out in the rain. You think you might melt like sugar. Yeah. All right, here's another one. Make a rainstorm go away spell. What you need to have is nothing except the words. So when it starts getting dark, you chant this with a lot of feeling. Oh, chant. Chanting is Now, good. I'm not going to put in a lot of feeling because I rarely do a lot of feeling on anything. But I'm, sure. going, I'm not going to do it. Gods of power, gods of might, I bid you now stop this plight. Again with the rhyming. Stop the rain. Well, most, you know, Wiccans were early rappers. Okay. Stop the rain. We need no more. Let it fall. Never more. Put a lot of feeling in stopping the rain. From falling from the clouds, and it will not fall. That's all you got to do is put a lot there, of feelings. Are they promising that? That's what it says. Put a lot of feelings in stopping the rain from falling from the clouds. It will not fall. It will simply move away to an area from where you are, and then it will fall. Okay, you know what that reminds me of? Oh, hold on. I use this all the time when I'm mowing the lawn, and it's about to rain. Then I cast this, and I finish the lawn. That's what it says. I'm just reading. Don't kill okay, the Okay, so that reminds me of mm -hmm. of if you try, if you pray hard enough, your loved one will live. Yeah, that's that's what that's what that reminds me. <laughs> All of these me are of. that. All it of these also, are It also that. reminds me um, if you if you believe, then Santa Claus exists. Pretty much, and uh, any other deities or fairies or supernatural characters, if you believe it, they'll they'll be around. Elvis, even Elvis Easter Bunny. <laughs> um, Okay, and then there's one, which I'm not going to go into too long on this one. Uh, this is from a website called The Stormborn Witch. Uh, witchcraft for the Weather Witch, and it's weather magic. Now, this one is a little more serious. Okay. So, basically, what they say to do is to actually get a weather map of your location, print it out, and laminate it, and then you can actually plot out weather stuff on it. But here's what I thought was interesting. Let me see if I can find this really, really quick. Boom, 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 boom. While he's looking for that, I just want to reiterate that we are not making fun of anybody's religion or beliefs. Ooh. At this time, we are just making fun of these specific specific spells because they just seem silly to us. One of the things here, it says that you can uh, cast the storm out and cast it into a braid or a knot. So in other words, you're, you're, you're casting out the spell demon or whatever and, and putting it into something else. Um. Oh, oh! Here it is. 
And this is when they were talking about plotting out the... The map? Uh, yeah. It says, to practice this kind of magic, you really do need to know how weather systems work and how they're likely to move. Knowing a little bit about meteorology goes a long way. Sure. I'm thinking if you know a little bit about me meteorology, you're not going to be doing spells. Because you're going to realize that it doesn't work that way. Weather doesn't work that way. It just kind of is what it is and does what it does yeah. based on lots of things that involve science and not magic. I used to do that when I was a kid. Because um, I was terrified of thunderstorms when I was a kid. I had this uh, unnatural fear of tornadoes. And I lived in East Tennessee. And the, the springtime, there were a few tornadoes up that way. And tornadic activity. Tornadic. And so we lived next to a train track. And a train would come. Like, there'd be like horrible big storms. And, mm -hmm. and right above my bed was a window. And the window screen would just, mm -hmm. you know, just scare the crap out of me. I couldn't sleep all night. So I would just wait and wait for a train to go by. When the train went by, it would cover up the sound, and I could during that little bit of time, I could try to fall asleep. Then I'd be fine. Okay. But I would sit. I would sing to the the storm, in my mind. I would sing to the storm. Really. I would make try up, to calm it. Yes, and I would, I would be like, "Please go away," and I would do. And then it would actually start dissipating sometimes. And I thought, "I'm having an effect. It's it's working. It's working." And I think that's what happens is. You know, because I was thinking about that. I thought, what if we do this? What if I say this today and really kind of piss off some, you know, witch out there? And she puts a spell on me. Mm -hmm. And then I got a spell. She's like, I'm going to show you. And I put it, she put, or she or he, whatever, puts a spell on me. Mm -hmm. And so that happens. It's like voodoo. You, when no, you get different. No, I'm just saying, like voodoo, if you get a spell on you in voodoo, there are people who have died who don't believe in voodoo because. Once you know you've got the spell on you and things start happening, mm -hmm. you think it's happening because of the voodoo. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can say, I'm going to put this epic disaster cursed on you this week. Me? By the end of the week, you all this stuff will happen. You'll be like, how did you do that? How did you put the, the, the this epic disaster curse on me? Now my life is screwed up. Don't screw my life. And it, it would just be because you normally have crazy bad things. Now you're right. just thinking it's happening because of that. Now, you do know that kids do it a lot. They wish their parents dead. Yeah. Right? Um, and so little, little kids, they're like, I wish you were dead. I wish you were never here, uh -huh. blah, blah, blah. Now, you can't stop them from never having been there or else you wouldn't be there. So the logic of a child. But you can wish them dead. So when mm -hmm. you wish them dead and you go about your business and it's the next day and you don't, you're not mad at them anymore mm -hmm. and they die. Children carry that guilt with them sure. for a long, long time because they believe that they had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. They think it's their fault because they wished it to happen. Um, and I think that's kind of jacked up. Yeah. I mean, just in general. Well, it's, you know, we're human beings are very superstitious people. I mean, it's, it's coincidence, total coincidence. But you, you start looking for reasons. You start looking for uh, results and repercussions and consequences and all that, and you start reading things into it. Mm -hmm. See, I I just kind of believe in the whole chaos theory. I yeah. mean, it is what it is, and it's not. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. Well, if your you know your kid dies, or or maybe not something even that dress, you you lost money right in the lottery right. You you could be convinced that you're being punished because you know God has punished you because you're playing the lottery and you shouldn't be. And now I'm going to go back into my religion. And I'm going to live a much closer life to God just because of a coincidence. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying it. a lot of times it's just a coincidence. It's just coincidence. Yeah. There's just coincidence. absolutely coincidence every day in our lives. And I think that a lot of mystics and a lot of faith healers, a lot of um, wizards, mm -hmm. they've learned to read those kind of um, setups and those opportunities mm -hmm. and they can kind of predict what's going to happen based on things and so they can say you're going to go home and you're going to be sick just because you know the, in an interview with somebody they kind of learn some stuff about them and then the person goes home and then they're sick and then they're like this person knows about me this that's yeah. how they do it. They're psychic. Yeah, and and that's true. There are those people are 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 I would call them charlatans. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they would call themselves empaths. Mm -hmm. um, now I know what it feels like to be generally empathic, mm -hmm. uh, 
because or empathetic, if you will, because I, I can absolutely feel the the energy in the room. And I don't believe that that's a scam at all. Uh, but what you do with that information by telling somebody this is how you're going to feel, blah, blah, blah. Now give me money. Yep. That kind of sucks. Yeah. Well, OK. I, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, it's, to me, spells are interesting just because they're just poetry. And I don't I feel like words ultimately words don't have any kind of strength to them they do to uh, to people to human beings but it's not the words themselves it's just you know if 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 i said to you um i hate you that means a lot to me it, that's what i'm saying you could take that same sentence and it might make you laugh or it might make you cry depending on what you think i mean so whatever's happening to that the power is in your own head it's done both by the way yeah and that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's the power of those words are in your head. And so Absolutely. it's the same thing with the spell. Like right now, like if I said that right now and the storm just happened to move away for whatever, I mean, for actual meteorological reasons, moved right. away. Right. I would say it was the spell. You wouldn't. Well, I am. I'm just saying I, in that situation, I would say, look, the spell did it. You'd be wrong. I, I, I. Ultimately, I would, but you couldn't prove it by the events that happened. You're See? correct. Yeah. You're correct. So anyway. Well, that's an interesting um, interesting road we just went down there. <laughs> not sure not sure why we did, but... Um, I'm trying... To, it's the thunderstorms. I don't want there to be a curse. Now you're pretending like you believe that shit. Uh, I'm just saying I don't know. I'm, it's a protection. Okay. I'm just protecting myself. All right. So, <clears throat> pardon me. If we are to stop the thunderstorms mm -hmm. during this epic disaster recording, yes. what we need to do, yep. and I'm going to do this next mm -hmm. week, and mm -hmm. so are you, is that for the entire day prior to me coming over here to record, we are going to do those chants. Yes, that's and, how it works. And those spells. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see if there is a thunderstorm. Uh, and then if it works, we need to start working on the lottery. Absolutely. Do a, this, a lottery spell. Yes, and love. A <laughs> love spell. Well, you got, got you've that. got love, because you like to rub that in my face. Not your love, but you like to rub Ooh. things in my face a lot. Um, talking about rubbing things in faces. Up. Well, hey, um, I should. I want to talk about our our listeners because our listeners have been interacting with our our social media a lot here yeah. in the last week, yeah. two weeks. Um, liking things, commenting, posting, and I just want to say thank you. It's very, it's fun to get the interaction. It's fun to know that people are listening to all of this. I agree. Stuff that we're doing. I agree. If the spells help you, if they're casting out the storms in your life, yeah, just let us know. Absolutely. Just rewind this a little. Rewind. Mm -hmm. Go back a little <laughs> bit in this and and just listen to it. Write it down. Try That's it next right. time. Let us know how it works out. But I just want to say thanks to uh, our good friends out there, our listeners, our people who've been hanging out with us mm -hmm. to say thank you. Now, we do have a listener um, who is a new, newish listener, mm -hmm. uh, but she's been uh, an online friend of mine for, oh dear God, I think seven years, uh -huh. possibly. Uh, we've never met in person, um, and we've just recently decided to act actively uh, kind of get to know each other better. Okay. Because we've just kind of liked each other's things on Facebook once every six months up until now. Sure. Um so she sent me a care package when she found out that I adopted Toffee. Oh, wow. All right. So she saw it, obviously, on Facebook because we're friends on Facebook. Toffee, your puppy. My puppy, your yes. Your doggy. But she also heard us talk about it on the podcast because she's listening now. A care package. So what was that? It was balls. It was a box of goodies. And I, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail about my thoughts on it, but there had to be at least a hundred dollars worth of stuff in there. Wow! And that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a big, big deal. So I was so, so, so appreciative, and I took pictures as I opened the box. I took a picture of the open box, and I took a picture of everything I could take out of the box as I took it out. So I'm going to post those tonight. No, the night this comes out. So for you listening, it would be tonight. And um, you get to see everything she sent me. She sent cool. me toys, like rough, rough, like dogs can't kill toys. Oh, yeah. She also sent me um, treats that she uses to train with. They're mm -hmm. training treats, the little guys. 
and she sent me um well first she sent me a card Mm -hmm. and it's a new baby card and it's so cute and her and her little notes are so sincere she put little notes on a few of the objects like this is why i sent this to you you know so she's explaining herself through the whole thing and i was just i was blown away i cried i really did i opened this box and i was like because she told me you should be expecting a package from me, but she didn't tell me what was in it because she's awesome and she doesn't like to ruin surprises. So when I got it, I was surprised. I was shocked and I cried. And Toffee was there with me and every toy I brought out or everything I brought out, she's like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? I want that. I want that. And the one I could not get a picture of that she absolutely loves is this little like half, half a grapefruit thing. Uh-huh. And it's made out of that stuff that you gave me of her dinosaur that they can't bite through. But oh. it's soft and it has a squeaker in it. Yeah, and it's like this little flat grapefruit. It's so cute, and and I tried to get a picture of it right as she took it out of my hand. <laughs> so that's mine. <laughs> that's mine. That was sent for me. Uh, but she also sent me an ass load of bandanas. Oh, I hope you washed them. So many bandanas. Mm. Yeah, and I don't know how to put a bandana on a dog. I put them on me. Do you know how to put a bandana on a dog? I think so. I but I don't do it. I I'm always kind of because I put one like on choke her and it, or something. and it just look it looks silly. Well, if you're taking it for a walk, it's good. Just to kind of tie it around her neck or something like well, that. Well, that's what it's I did. Cool. Sure. At first, I did it to where it looked like a little cape, like the bandana was going <laughs> yeah, off the back. That's kind of fun. And it was kind of cute. And then I looked at pictures. I'm like, okay, I have to Google this. So I googled <laughs> bandanas on dogs. You don't even know how to put a bandana on a dog. I don't. How there, do you survive I, in this world? I don't know. And then everybody had it like going down the front, like a bandana, like yeah. on their chest. Right. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, let me try that. I try. It just looks silly. But she did wear it over the, to well, our friend's house. Putting clothes night. on dogs looks silly. So, but you do it every once in a while. I mean, bandana is kind of cool. So I think, you know, dogs kind of feel proud sometimes when you do that. Yeah. So. She was she just kept getting it in time. her mouth and trying to pull it off. Yeah. So, uh, but thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell everybody it was Lori that sent this to me. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. I'm very, very cool. Yeah. Well, other people can send us care packages if they would like. The problem is we don't have a mailing address. We got to get a mailing address. We do. We used to have one. We need to get another one we so we do. can tell people where to send care packages. I can't give want. out my... It's like beer. that like People could sell, send their hometown beer to us. <gasps> oh, speaking of which, yeah. I have a friend from Alaska who's coming to visit in October. Really? My bef- 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 best friend uh-huh. from Alaska is coming to visit in This is in the October. Uh, stalker. The stalker, yes. The stalker. She's also a listener. We've yes. talked about her. She's coming here for a week in October, and she mentioned to me today, she's like, should I bring anything? Mm-hmm. And, of course, I was like, yes, you should bring this, because instantly I knew something I missed can from you, Alaska. Can you put beer on a flight and stuff like that? Can you do that? Well, she mentioned maybe I'll just ship you some Alaskan brewed beer oh. for your podcast. I thought that would be great. Now, we'll have to look at the laws of shipping alcohol from yeah. Alaska. I, now, you can't ship alcohol within Alaska. You could strap it to a salmon. Yeah, but you can't train a salmon to swim to All Georgia. All the way to Atlanta. There's yeah. There's not a lot of Georgia salmon. Not going to happen. No. No. Especially since there's no actual way to get to Georgia yeah. from Alaska via water. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to happen. No. Um, unless it's a flying salmon. Which there are a few here. Yeah. I've seen a few. Yeah. yeah. I mean, occasionally, like twice, I've seen a salmon flying across the sky. Yeah. Yeah. It was right after you visited Colorado, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was. I did not get that high in Colorado. Uh, sure. It's true. You're seeing flying salmon. Actually, I think it was just somebody throwing fish at a fish market. But, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for her to come, obviously, because I just want to see her. And I'm also excited that she's going to bring me stuff. Stuff. And that she wants to send us stuff. Yeah. So if anybody wants to send us stuff, as soon as we have an address, you can send. You can send. I love the idea of trying out beer and stuff. I remember, uh, and this was with the Life in the Kill podcast, but somebody wanted to send us some cheese mm. like, from their hometown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. I'm not going to turn that down. Who <laughs> would? I never turn down cheese. But yeah, that's very cool. And anytime you want to send a care package, we, we, I mean, it gives us something to do on the air. You right, know, right. Because we don't always have something to do. And and I can't give out my mailing address because no. it's actually where I live. Right. Neither of us want to do that. That would be awkward. Yeah, we don't want people showing up and going, yeah. here's a care package. We and only, I want to see you naked. We only have one stalker right now. And she'd probably right. say that. Yeah. But um, that's okay. She's <laughs> seen me naked before. Um. But I don't want like a random stranger showing up and saying that because that right. would be weird. Okay. I think we're learning a little too much about you at this point. 
What, that my friends see me naked? Yes. Why is that weird? Is that like, is that like a punishment? <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> Jesus. You can't be my friend unless you see me nude. So if anybody I'm attracted to is listening to this podcast, they're going to be like, oh, oh, maybe it no. Can we be friends first? Mm, I don't want to see her naked now. It's punishment. Uh, you have to see everybody nude at you least. You just screwed my entire chances with everybody that listens to this podcast. No. How, do, if you're a dude, that's the whole object of being a friend is hoping that someday you'll see them naked. I don't the think that's the better, true. It is. That's the bottom line. You're of, friends with me and you don't want to see me naked. I've already seen you naked. <laughs> see? Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to go back in time. It, I've already done my time. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I've already done it. I, I, it's, I don't ever have to do that again. Thank God. Wait a minute. I have beer in my glass still. I might throw it in your face. You are being rude, sir. But I'm just saying... For generally, for dudes, that's that's the object of every relationship, every especially opposite sex relationships. But w- even if it's not opposite sex, 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 the same sex that you find attractive, mm-hmm. you, I mean, you know, you want to see them naked. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the thing. That's the goal. It is of being friends. N- nakedness is is a large part of that. Yes, <laughs> <clears throat> some larger than others, but yes. <laughs> Yes, and we won't talk about that because no. I'm nicer than you are. I know. <laughs> now put your clothes on. Let's. Um... All right, let's get back to the podcast. Um, I just, you know, I do like people to see me naked. I, I can't stop that. It's a thing. I'm a little bit of an exhibitionist. A little bit. We'll we'll get into that at, uh, at another episode. Okay. Because that's <laughs> we need a psychiatrist, a special <laughs> guest, a psychiatrist for that one, therapist. Um, to help us out. It didn't work. I um, have a question. Wait, did you have something else you needed to get into? I don't think so. Um, I did take uh, my dog to her vet appointment, the first vet appointment with me yesterday, and that was fun. Um, they say she's perfectly healthy, and they gave me some tips and tricks, and I love my new vet. I'm going to give them a shout-out. It's uh, East Atlanta Animal Clinic, uh-huh. um, and they are awesome And your dog over there. is downstairs barking right now. And I can hear her. But maybe other people can, too, <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> uh, well, that's cool. You should tell them we gave them a shout-out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Awesome that she's healthy. It's always good to have a healthy dog. I agree. And she's very energetic downstairs. <laughs> she was. Well, she's very manic. She, Typical puppy. Yeah. yeah. She's um, okay. So you know, there's puppy stages, and there's the little tiny puppy that kind of wanders around and trips and falls, and is very cute, and, and pees and poops wherever they want, and picks up, you know, anything and put it in their mouth, carry it around. And you're like, oh, he's cute. He's got my T-shirt. Mm-hmm. And then there's the large puppy. Mm-hmm. That is like a tank, <laughs> almost like an adult dog, but still has puppy energy. It's that's, like a tank with zoomies, and kind of that's sort of where your dog is. Yeah, she's she's like uh, crazy, doing fifty things at once, and she doesn't have an adult dog body, but she's she's big. She's getting there. Yeah, she's anywhere. She can do some damage. The vet says she's anywhere from six to eight months okay. at this point, uh, which is where we assume she was. And she is, uh, yeah, she she can absolutely do some damage. Matter of fact, I was at my uh, buddy's house uh, Sunday night for for drinks on the porch. And uh, he has a large black pit bull Mm -hmm. um, who, when we sit on the front porch, he does have a fence, but she gets a little uh, runny uppy to the fence when people walk by and she barks. And it's frightening to people, you know, so he doesn't want her to scare people off and be that guy. You know, so she keep he keeps her tethered to the porch. It's not like she can't reach us. She sits right by me and licks all on me and loves and everything, and she's perfectly comfortable and happy. Yeah. So uh, Toffee was over there with her. Her name is Gabby, and they were laying down. And Toffee like uh, broke Gabby out of jail. She laid there for a good oh I don't know twenty minutes and chewed through a thick nylon leash <laughs> that she was tethered with. Yes. Chewed right through it. You're free. Go. No. Actually, what she did is she chewed right through it. Then she grabbed a hold of the part that was still attached to Gabby and started pulling on it. Leading her away. She was. <laughs> Come on. Take Let's you for go. a walk. 
I was blown away. I was awesome. blown away. I did hear, though, from my vet, and I told her that story, and she said there's this product out there called Mountain Dog. Now, if anybody of you have used this product, I want to uh, get some verification from you. She says that Mountain Dog leashes and collars mm -hmm. are made from recycled mountain climbing rope. And if your dog is able to chew through it or if it should break at all, you simply bring it back to the store. It doesn't have to be the same store you bought it at. Any store that actually sells them, you bring the pieces of the product back, and they will give you a brand new one. Wow. So essentially, it's like going back to the manufacturer and saying, hey, this didn't work. But instead of you having to do that, you just take it to the store, and then the store does that. Nice. They get it replaced too, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm gonna look for this product. Check it out, dude. Yeah. See about look at their website. Absolutely, get, I'm gonna do that. Amazon. It's exciting. Check them out. It's exciting. Well, you know, um, speaking of mountain climbing, I just read this. What? Just, just thought about it. What? Just read it a couple days ago. Uh, Mount Everest. You know where Mount Everest is? Uh huh. They got a problem. What's the problem on Mount Everest? Poop. Because people poop up there. People are pooping. And not and taking they it. they just leave it. And they say that there's this huge poop problem on Mount Everest. I'm, Human poop problem. I don't, I don't doubt it. But only people that climb that actually are of the belief what you bring in, you take out. And that yeah. means everything should be able to allow to should be able to be allowed to climb mount everest yeah. because everything that's up there including dead bodies mm -hmm. uh, you can't get a dead body down no from mount everest i i saw that too and i mean it was one of the most disturbing things i've seen photographs yes of these dead bodies and they're preserved because it's ice up there mm -hmm. it just kind of stays frozen all the time and i think the oldest one is from like 1920 and something people mark their paths by the dead bodies yep there's like there's that dead guy and then you go left at that dead guy right and they've named them mm -hmm. people know that that's creepy but they can't. There's nothing they can do about it. You cannot remove that dead body. I assume you could probably go up there and maybe cremate it. I mean, what's the draw? It's like, do you want to climb Mount Everest? Yeah. Why? Why should we? Well, there's lots of poop and dead bodies. Sure, let's do it. Really high up in the sky where you can't breathe, and we might die. Yeah. We might be one of the dead bodies. Uh, ultimately, I would be. Or poop. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, I would be a landmark. On Mount Everest, I would like to see it from like from a plane from the air, but I I wouldn't climb it. I'm not a mountain climber anyway. No, but like I would love to go to Tibet. I would love to go to Tibet, but I have heard that a good part of getting to Tibet is actually climbing because it's so dangerous. Like driving there, you could fly, I guess. I don't know. Even flying, they say, is pretty treacherous. But just getting up there, you, you have to do a little part of it as climbing. And then once you're there, I mean, it's like this kind of paradise in the sky, but you also have to do a lot of climbing while you're there, too, I think. Well, you can always just visit other parts of Nepal. I'd rather just read a book. Okay. <laughs> a picture book. Okay. It's so much easier. Do you want it to be a pop-up picture book? <laughs> no. I've read some really interesting books about Nepal and okay. Tibet and all of that kind of stuff. I would love to go. Let's There's go. There's a great book called Turtle Feet. Have you heard it? I have not. Great book. Read okay. It. You should read it. Turtle Feet. Yep. Do you know who it's by? I used to know. I don't know anymore. All right. Well, we will it's look about, that up. Um, uh, it's, it's sort of autobiographical, I believe. I think it's sort of a fictionalized uh, uh, account of true events. Oh, wow. Someone who used to... I Based think they on went, a real story. Yeah, I think they were going through the Buddhist school there, one of the Buddhist schools, and kind of got to know a lot of the villagers. and all. It's, it's an interesting book. Okay, it's been a while so, since I've read it. So Turtle Feet, just real quick, mm -hmm. in case anybody's interested, as soon as Goodreads come up. <laughs> you know, Goodreads.com is a pretty awesome site. Um, so Turtle Feet is by Nikolai mm -hmm. Grozny. Yeah. Um, it, it gets four stars on, yeah. on Goodreads. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, he was a music prodigy. Uh, he was a jazz That's right. pianist. That's right. Yeah. He was training at Berklee College of Music mm -hmm. in Boston. Yep. Um, and he just decided to change his life. He moved to India to become a Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. He shaved his head. He learned Tibetan. And he ended up in the Himalayas, um, went from Dalai Lama's compound. He lived right by the Dalai Lama. Uh, he, he got into some messes and some weirdness. And from there, you know, read the story. Yeah, uh, it's very interesting. I they call it thoughtful, funny, and elegantly elegantly written. Do they have it in, on an audible kind of? 
Oh, know. I'm sure. That's what, because I spend a lot of time reading. I'd, I'd like to listen to it. So I think I will too. It's kind of a cool book, especially if you're interested in Tibet and that kind of stuff. Hey, you know what we should start doing on the podcast? What? <laughs> not talking like that. Oh, uh, why not? Um, because you sound like <laughs> what everybody thinks we sound like. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we should start doing book recommendations. Okay. You want to do that? Um, we could have our own book club. We could. And we could like put our own book. Uh, the, the, here's a problem. What? I don't read a lot. But you listen. I do listen to a lot. I've been, uh, I, okay, so I joined Audible mm -hmm. for a while and the book started piling up and I just didn't listen to it because I listen to a lot of podcasts. I just don't listen to a lot of books. Okay. And so I still, I, I canceled my Audible membership, but I still have like 10 books waiting in queue, which sure. I don't know that I'll ever listen to. Sure. But I traded my Audible membership for an Amazon uh, Kindle. Uh-huh. That's the best thing. Is it? Yes. Why is that? You get, you get, actually get, I'm just a reader. I like to read, even though I said I don't read a lot. I don't read a lot of novels and things like that. Mm -hmm. I read self-help. I read true things. I like true. Mm -hmm. You like, you like autobiographies. How, I like, no, I like how to do. I like true. I used to like spiritual kind of, you know, self-help type books. But you, but you do like autobiographies because you listen, or, or biographies, I guess, because you like to, to read things like by comedians that you like. You like to read Sometimes. things by people that you know, celebrities or people of, of note yeah. who write a book about themselves. Sometimes. Um, that's what you like to read. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes I do that. But I like to, you know, just get information type books, like uh, books on software that I'm using or something. And I read a lot of that kind of stuff. Sure. But I just don't, I'm not a big fiction person. I went on a, I think I mentioned this on the last pod, oh, on the other podcast a long time ago. I decided I was going to read the classics. And I'm going to hurt some people's feelings right now. Okay. <laughs> I want to hear it. I decided I was going to read the classics at one point. Some stuff that I just never got around to reading. Like the stuff they make you read in high school? Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of that I didn't read. I read some of it, but I just didn't. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick... And I kind of looked, I think I might have done some internet searches. So I decided I was going to read Catcher in the Rye. Mm. So I got that book. I read it. That, that book is horseshit. It is not it's horseshit. It's the worst book ever written. I hated that book. Wow. I, that's the most overrated book I have ever read in my life. I couldn't, I thought it was a joke. I kept waiting. I actually kept looking at the end. I was like, Okay, at some point, something's going to happen here. It's going to get better. It's going to get good. And I kept going through. I kept waiting. It never did. It was the worst freaking book. I don't understand people when they come out and say, that's the best book. And uh, who was it? Mark David Chapman, the guy that killed uh, John Lennon, who carried it in his pocket. And there was somebody else, some other famous uh, killer who carried it around. And people get obsessed with that book. I, it, there's nothing to that book. So, it's the so you worst do realize book. that Salinger is rolling over in his grave right now. I I hope I make him do a few turns. That I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad author. I, I what other books did he write? One horrible book. Where did he get that reputation? I'm just saying. Wow. I read a lot of stuff about him. He seems like a cool guy. I, he should have written a better book. <laughs> that book sucks. There's a lot of books that I like. There's a lot of classics I like. There's a lot of classics that are hard to read. That wasn't hard to read. It was just a crappy book. No, he did write other books. It's a crappy only. book. Okay. I want to know who else out there read that book and, and is brave enough to admit in public that that's a crappy book. Okay. If you think it's a crappy book and you read it for real, yeah. please email us and let us know. And if you love that book, please do not say anything about it. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> or tell me why. Convince me why. It. I just need to know. I. It, to me, it was just like. It was like, really? Is this what everybody talks about? What? What is? Why is this spectacular? It. It. It was really. It was like some kid wrote it, and I know it's supposed to be like that. But it was like some kid wrote it, and nothing in the entire book happens. Nothing happens. Okay. So but you don't even like movies like that, though. You don't like movies where they just end. You want some kind it, of ending, some well, resolution, some kind of... You want a story. There was barely even a story. It was just some, you know, kind of 
tough kid going from place to place and and nothing ever happens. You keep waiting for something to happen and it doesn't happen. Nothing. It, the book is nothing. Okay. okay. It's nothing. So before I, I re, I'm not for burning books, but I am for that one. Jesus. Wow. Okay. So before we go any further with the classics, I have to tell you who my favorite, one of my favorite authors is. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, he's third on the list, Okay. but he's a classic author. Okay. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Okay. Okay. So. I read The Great Gaps being in, in uh, high school. And. I don't remember it. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So I, 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 much, pre I, I much prefer his short stories. I mean, when I was in high school, there was so many other things I'd rather be doing. So anything I was reading, I mean, I. You know, I was a theater major. I hated Shakespeare in college. Yeah. I mean, in high school. Yeah. Anything that they're forcing you to read, you're not going to enjoy that. Yeah. You don't really enjoy reading until much later. I liked, I liked Clifford the Dog in kindergarten. <laughs> that is a classic. Thank you. Well, see, now, I like poetry. I That's kind of my speed. And I like short stories and I like essays. I just, it's hard for me, like... I remember reading um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh -huh. which blew me away at the time. Yeah. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. And so, I mean, I've read some stuff like that. There was a book. I'm going to say this book because no one's ever heard of it. Okay. And it, I just got riveted into that book. Ooh, it was riveting. That's a big word for you. I know. Uh, it's called The Dragon and the George. The Dragon and the George? Yes. I remember that from high school, and then not too long ago, I actually looked it up, and I tried to find some stuff. And the author actually has written a lot of sci-fi, yeah, sci-fi kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It is sort of fantasy. Well, it is. It's very much fantasy. And basically, the story is some dude turns into a dragon, and it's sort of his adventures. Okay. But I remember that in high school, and I loved that book. Ooh, I can get that on iBooks for $6. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, I don't even know if the author's still alive. But he wrote a lot of stuff. Oh, that wait, so book. he went, he, okay, hold on. He also wrote <clears throat> The Dragon at War, The Dragon on the Border, The yeah. Dragon Knight, The Dragon this, The Dragon that. The yeah, I think, lots and lots of dragons. I think he realized uh, I got a franchise here. Yeah. yeah. But the first one, that was, that was a good one. I love that. The Dragon and the George. I don't remember much at all about it, but. Well, okay. Um, so maybe we'll think about that doing some books. Oh, uh, yeah. That is the first one of the Dragon Knight series. We should probably think about winding on the podcast. Let's do that. Um, if anybody has any suggestions about books or if you have any thoughts on what Rick just did to, um, to uh, Catcher in the Rye, uh, <laughs> I would like to hear that. He might not, but I would. I, I like it when people put him down for reasons. Catcher in my butt, you mean. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm, hold on. We should do. We should set up a book club, and then people can be members, and then they can do their own suggestions and stuff too. And then they can join if they want to. And I'd be happy to listen to any book. I, I don't read as fast as I used to. I used right. to go through a book a book every two days. Yeah. Um, I read a lot as a young person. Well, you would probably like Audible. Then you should do Audible. It's worth it. I yeah. Mean, really. Yeah. I uh, my favorite authors in the past have been <clears throat> Stephen King, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost. Oh yeah, he's got a new one out, doesn't he? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Anne Rule. Oh, yeah. Anne Rule wrote uh, true crime novels. She rules. She used to. She's dead. Uh, which makes me very sad, which means there's no more Anne Rule novels. They could so, do a, like a superhero thing called Dead Rule. That would be <laughs> awesome. I know. I could play her. I just made that up. Okay. Uh -huh. And then. That was um, pretty good, wasn't it? It was good. Yeah, it was great. And uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, his uh -huh. short stories are, are pretty amazing. I All mean, of them. He couldn't just spell out his name. I mean, come on. It's a long name. All right. Anyways, um, so, yeah, let's do this. Let's think about it. We would like some feedback to see if you guys would even do it with us. Do, are, do you think our people read books? I don't know. I don't know who listens to our podcast. I, I'm, I don't even know if some of our listeners even know that they're listening to a podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know sometimes if I know that I'm doing a podcast. You are so insulting. Sometimes. I know. All right, so let's let's wind down for now. I think we've insulted people enough. Um, <laughs> Talk about our beer. Before we do that, though, I yes. wanted to tell you what that I thought about making a belt out of watches, but I decided it would be a waste of time. 
I have to hand it to you. That's a horrible in the podcast. <laughs> It's a horrible way to wind things up. <laughs> oh, and did you know that there was a ship shaking at the bottom of the ocean? No. It was a nervous wreck. No, it wasn't. It didn't happen. That wasn't even real. That wasn't true. <laughs> I wonder if I could find a spell to get rid of these jokes. <laughs> Maybe I could go back into like Google and I could Google spells for getting rid of bad jokes. I'm going to look for that next week. They're not bad. Um, if you like hearing bad jokes and you want to keep coming back, I think you've ruined. Off, I think you've run everybody off the podcast. But if you do like to come back, we would love to have you to come back. If you want to know more about the podcast, you can find us at thisepicdisaster dot com. Yes. If you'd like to interact with the podcast, if you'd like to send us information, if you'd just like to say hi, if you'd like to say, um, you know, get rid of that dude and do a podcast by yourself, like everybody else says, mm-hmm. um, send us email at thisepicdisaster at gmail dot com. That'd be great because I'll get it. Yeah, uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're everywhere you want to be. Like Visa. What's in your wallet? That's Capital One. Oh, I'm mixing my commercials. But anyway, yeah, please do. We love it when you get involved. If you're downloading the podcast, wherever you download the podcast, if it's iTunes or Google Play or anything, go there and leave us some stars. Tell, Give us a rating. Tell people what you think about it because that helps us out. Mm-hmm. It really does. Mm-hmm. It helps our ranking at that place. And more people find us and we get to do more things yep. and then you have more people to interact with in regard to our podcast. And they might list our podcast on the front page. That'd be awesome. That'd be very cool. So please do. we like to know who's out there uh, and at least say hi to us on Facebook or someplace like that. I'm going to give the beer a two and a half and here's why. Okay. It's a it's a regular lager. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, the reason I'm only giving it a two and a half... Uh, actually, no. For this reason, I'm taking it down to a two. Oh. Do you want to know why I'm taking it down to a two? Sure. It's only four and a half percent alcohol. Oh, uh, not even doesn't have a payoff. Crap. Well, I was gonna be like, oh wow, because I'm giving it a two and a half. <laughs> I would almost be also willing to take it down to a two. I, I just find that it's it's kind of like what you said. It's just a just a regular beer. Yes. And I mean, if you like regular beers, and you like IPAs, but this is not an IPA. This it's is a lager. not. It's a lager. It's. Uh, it's fine. It has a very kind of, I want to say piney, grassy kind of sure, taste. Sure, sure. Which is, uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Barely starts leaning towards citrus, but not much. That's what I don't like when it goes into that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it has not much bitterness, but there is a tiny, tiny bit of bitter in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, you know, it's a good beer. I think it's a beer that you would want to have with food. It's just sure basic beer. Sure. It's not got a lot of flavor. It's not going to be overpowering in any way. Which means it's going to go with whatever you're eating. Pretty much. So mm-hmm. um, give it a try. Give it a look. And the brewing company, you know. You know what it wouldn't go with? Uh, dog biscuits. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. This would not go with cheesecake. Most beer would not. No, I've had beers. We've had some. That would go with cheesecake. We've had some that would actually make a good cheesecake. Oh, yeah. All right, people, thank you uh, for joining us this week. We're always surprised when you come back. I know, right? Oh, and, my God, they came back. And thank you for doing so. I'm actually surprised when we come back. But we love it. We have a good time, and we like to hang out and do this, and we're going to be doing it every week for a long time. You can find us every Monday. A new show comes up. So that's what we're going to be doing. So you should subscribe so that when Rick finally does get around to uh, uploading the podcast, you actually get it automatically and you don't have to worry about it. That's right. And if you're the first to remind me, you get a sticker. Hey. We'll send you free stickers. There you go. All right. Thank you very much. We will talk to you next week on this same podcast. This epic disaster. Bye. Bye. This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast.